name's Grandad. First thing Sunday morning and the radiator install vlog has just been posted um, we had a comment straight away and a couple of other comments about chrome pipes uh, going into push fit fittings and really I should have thought about it but didn't but uh, yeah there we go so first thing uh, today is to just rub down a section of chrome off the pipes I've done the, done the bedroom and the bathroom already but I'm just sort of showing you what I've done and this will be done on all the radiators for the rest of the boat so I've just measured a mark off where the push fit fitting goes over the chrome pipe and I'm just rubbing this lightly down with a, a fine tooth file just to remove that chrome and then all I'll do then is say I'll just get a bit of sandpaper rub over with the sandpaper um, get any little indents out of it or whatever so it's nice and smooth but it's actually down now to plain copper so yeah and we've tested these and pulled them and stuff and it, they were right you, they are loose when they go in with the chrome pipe so if you're going to do this on the boat and you don't want to put plain copper pipe in or the um, plain, uh, chrome covers. The, the covers over the pipes which we really didn't want to do because I've seen them in other people's houses and they sort of anyway it's not a choice we wanted to have so this is what we're doing and uh, I'm sure they'll sort of these will work now this week we're doing a few of the little smaller jobs well say smaller jobs uh, as you see later on smaller jobs turn them into mammoth tasks but anyway you'll see that later on but first off we're just fitting the uh, chrome cover over the vent hole from the mushroom vent on the roof so that's in place now not sure about the rest of the boat whether they're going to be the same design but they're probably a similar look to these next on the list is to fit the power sockets and these are a mixture of ordinary plain sort of switch sockets and the ones that contain the usbs we're using uh, drywall back boxes so you just cut out where the cable needs to enter there push that into place and just clip the uh, holding clips into the side there and then it's just a case then of pairing up your wires and then stripping the bit of cable back the insulation back and then once that's all done we're fitting uh, ferrules onto these and obviously these are going to be double ferrules because there's two part two uh, wires going into there so just slip the double ferrule over the end of there um, slide it in once that's in place there's a little uh, crimp it off the uh, little metal strip there and then remove any excess little bits of wire that's poking through the end of there and do that for each one the live neutral and earth and then once that's done it's just a case of screwing those into the socket
just something to bear in mind if you're doing this yourself um, these covers are supplied with screws but they're usually too short if you've got quite a thick wall so we just brought um, a stash of longer screws uh, to do this because we knew that they were going to be too short So the next job on the list was to get the door frames in. Uh, the one between the bedroom and the bathroom is a really awkward shape. Um, lots of different angles and lots of bits to go over. And it took us a bit longer than what we thought it was going to do. A lot longer. Yeah. First job was to sort under the gunnel. And we didn't want our door to be misshapen and go under the gunnel. So we doing a, a stud wall there um, the same as on the ceiling we'll be doing a, a little stud wall there before we do anything else because of the pipes that are running along the floor and to get the the straight line um, we were going to have to sort of bring bring our wood out and go up the wall above the gunnel rather than just have have the um, stud wall under the gunnel yeah getting this door frame square without a door there to to put up to it was going to be a challenge so um all this bit under the gunnel is gonna just be um loosely fixed so once we've got the door and we can make sure that it's definitely square and in place
So the second frame was a lot easier than the first because it's more of a uniform shape. So that was easy, we could do that on the floor of the boat. So just squaring it off from corner to corner and then putting a brace in there. So now we can take it up and uh, fit it into the opening. The disappointment shows in his face. Yeah, so it didn't fit. <laughs> so it's time to get the multi tool out and have a little bit of a fettle around, a bit of a shave off here, shave off there. But it worked out okay in the end, and, and, and as you'll see, it slid into place. That's good. Then we've just got to put some little bits in where it's... Yeah. A bit duster. Hmm. I need to go outside and shake. Shake my body. Shake my body down. Can we told the... Just though, yeah, yeah, and do the same on the side. 100 mil from the top, four inch, and four inch, then sorry, 40 from that, isn't it? Forty from there, 40 from there. Do any on the top? Yeah. You might start thinking there's a lot of measuring going off there. Is it really necessary? But in my world, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of, bit of a geek when it comes to getting uh, things. I'd equal. have to do these things, yeah. Even getting the screws in the centre of the door in the door frame. But yeah, there was a there wasn't a reason really for getting him down the centre. That's just me. But the uh, main reason for getting measurements top and bottom and in the centre of the door frame is just so it doesn't interfere with any of the hinges that we're going to set into the timber and the door closure etc so we're just making sure that we avoid putting screws where they're going to be also because these frames are going to be uh, stained and varnished um, you still always see the filler in this in the uh, screw holes yeah so um, having them equal and neat and down the middle it makes it look a little bit better when you come to the finish yeah I think so as well yeah that's a good point you could use a plug cutter and put plugs into these but we haven't got one of those so it's filler it is once all the pilot holes were, were done and the holes were countersunk we could then start packing around the edge um, getting all the spaces filled up so it all sat square and we kept measuring as we were were doing this to to make sure that we hadn't pulled it out of shape and uh, just kept filling them up until it was all tight yeah and true yeah yeah and we just used the the, the pieces of wood we'd cut off the edge the yeah because the door frame wasn't a standard size we've had to cut the door frame to suit the wall thickness so these are just off cuts from that that we're just using to shim the sides the sides out to say as Ailey said to true the frame up that's all yeah carpenters joiners door fitters you're probably pulling your hair out now um we just made it up as we went along and and done it the best we could um and we love watching worth... youtube videos <laughs>
template time again. Um, I've just done some templates to go under the gunnels to cut the ply out um, for the stud wall. The noise you can hear in the background is a boat being grip blasted outside. You done that bit? Yeah. I think she's had it long enough sitting down convalescing now so it's time to crack the whip a bit and get her back on the tool so as you can see just cutting out the shape now that we've just transferred onto the plywood uh, and Ailey's just jigsawing these out now <laughs> Are you checking how straight it is? Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm just... I, I, it'd be all right with a bit of sand. <laughs> yeah, that's Captain Beaky. <laughs> that's enough. Back to the bedroom door frame. This one is um, obviously a lot harder to square up. So we're doing the best we can, but we'll have to just wait till we, we get the door in, really, to get it right. Yeah. We've had a bit of a rethink about this corner now. Originally we're going to put this bit of batten in behind and then this, what's going to make the door line or the, the frame for the door. But it was taking up too much room so we've scrapped that idea, that's being binned. Um, and we've cut, followed the same shape as that so it runs up into the wall. But yeah, we've, we've put this piece of plain timber now on straight onto there. So it saved us about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch on the width because it's getting tight. So yeah, this is going to run up there, obviously. There's nothing going on this top of the top of the gunnel up to the ceiling other than there may be a, a stop on here so the door has got something to If we need it, hopefully yeah. we'll just have the stop on Stop that. on the bottom, hopefully on the bottom. do that because it's yeah. not going to be bouncing. It's the bottom about. and across the top. Yeah. Yeah. So this was um, originally just like the stud wall. So now we've got rid of that yeah. end of that stud wall. Yeah. And we've just gone straight for the frame yeah. attached Rather to that Rather than being that, wall. then that. Yeah. We've saved ourselves really the thickness of that, haven't we? Yeah. 25 mil, which is an inch. Yeah. So, which is... A lot better. Yeah, an inch is a lot in my life. <laughs> and so I painted cut and painted these out and that fits in and goes cool. up to the top yeah. and then the same on the other side just, uh, goes on to there obviously there's going to be the ceiling bathroom ceiling or cladding will come straight up to this 
over the top of there. Yeah. And then the cable trays will just fit. And then we've just cut the cable trays down. So that they can we remove this side and that. Yeah. And not behind there. So we'll tack them up. Yeah. Now and then I've also done the um ply to cover the stud wall as well. Yeah. Tack them on. any in there is there a bit across the top yeah Just so that point's not touching, digging in the pipe. Yeah, just put a couple in that then. Yeah. Oh, I'll knock that over. Remember, we need to, might need to move this at some point. Yeah. So, one might do, just putting it yeah. in for the time being, just until we know. That's okay. Once the stud wall was all finished, um, we turned our attention back to the cable trays. We'd cut them in half, um, the cover, so it didn't go all the way through the stud wall. We wanted it either side so we can take them down uh, in future. The bathroom cable tray cover will be finished once all the ceiling's put in. So I'm going to come inside so far with the architecture, yeah? I think that's going to be enough. Yeah. Yeah. So the orchestra is going to finish there. Yeah. yeah. Same Right, so we need to put them down now then, to that size. Yeah? Yeah. Cheers. Inch and a half. Not right. Yeah. Inch and a half. They need inch and a half, so they need to go down to inch and a half. Back to the man cave now, a nice cold but sunny day, just running the architrave through the table saw now to get the right width and then it's back to the boat where we can start fastening them onto the walls.
once it was all in place we just used a, a brad nailer to attach it So once they were done, we used a nail punch and sunk them in a little bit, filled them with wood filler and that was that side done. A bit of blood on the there to keep forever. From a little wound. <clears throat> Uh, I think it still needs a little bit more off there because it's got to come over a bit more that way, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's equal to this side, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that angle's right, it just needs a little bit off it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so if we just uh, take a little bit off there like that. Yeah. So how we got that, I just made a little template the easiest way to do it too many little angles it's kind of a smidgen off it that's, that's a lot better that's yeah right so that's that one then look at that one caught my phone putting them two together probably Oh yeah. Oh, it's a lot, isn't it? Didn't mind that side too much. Yeah. Not another template. <laughs> <laughs> Ceiling now, I don't need to come across. Yeah, shall I just get that shape of the ceiling? Mm. A bit. I don't know if I'm going to bring it out from there. This is what you call CAD cardboard aided design. Cardboard aided design, this is CAD, CAD design. about right there for you. Yeah. Oh, about right. Yeah, so you don't want it pushed too far up there. No. Screw there, <laughs> that's, that screw there, might have to hold that one a bit. Move that over or take that one out. Yeah, but that one's okay. Yeah. And that's right all the way down the end town. Yeah, wicked. Well. And that's just got to go down that side. Great. And you thought this was going to be a quick job? This is the easy one because we've got to go to get some wood. So I just thought I'd do this for it to get the wood. <laughs> It's now three days later. <laughs> no two. Oh, 
Fabulous. So I'm just going over it with a 320 just to get, get it really smooth. This will all be the wardrobe, back of the wardrobe where it's built in. So I'll just fill this up, paint this little bit round below. And then you won't see the rest. The temporary lighting will be moved. I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once I've finished all this sanding, I'm using the uh, dark Jacobine wood stain that I've used on all the other pine stuff that we've used in here. Um, it just gives that like dark look rather than a, a, a white light look to the pine. And that's the first coat um, and I'll rub these down a bit more, sand them down where I put filler on the little dots, cover up the holes that are, um, I've not sanded it off properly. So all in and stain just needs varnishing. Outside done. As my hero says, trigger on only fools and horses. Always look after your broom. <laughs> 